This morning I have a unique assignment um, to talk about uh, Resurrection Sunday. We, we don't call it Easter for a particular reason. Um, the reason why we don't name it Easter is because Easter is so, typically what they do is they take a Christian day and they associate it with a pagan day. And so the same thing. So that's why some people who are woke will say, well, I don't go to church on Easter because Easter's not a, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, that's why we call it Resurrection um, Sunday. And so Resurrection speaks to um, the idea that Christ got up and was resurrected. And when we talk about, um, even when we talk about um, Christmas, Christmas was a day that Jesus was not necessarily born in December. Most believe he was born in the month of April or in the springtime. I like to believe he was born yesterday because that's my birthday, praise God. But we utilize it to celebrate um, his birth. All right, so turn with me um, this morning. I want to minister for a few moments of time entitled this simple subject called I Plead the Name and I Plead the Blood. I'm going to give you a host of scriptures that we'll be jaywalking through, so it just won't be one scripture that we will be on, but we'll jaywalk through a host of scriptures. Throughout the Bible, there has been, in the book of Genesis, and I want you to write, in the book of Genesis, come on, Pastor, in the book of Genesis, there is um, a first introduction to the blood. You see Cain and Abel, Cain ends up murdering his brother, and then the scripture says that the blood hit the ground and the blood began to speak. So we instantly started to see something interesting happen that the blood in some unique way had speaking power. Somebody say amen. Then we move further on, and then we find that the blood not just had speaking power, but we also found that the blood had the ability to communicate to God something. And then in Exodus chapter number 12, in Exodus chapter number 12, we also find something unique happening. We find that there is a blood on the litno post. And this blood on the litmus poles created a situation whereby God said, if you see the blood hanging on the litmus poles, I will pass over it. So anybody who had blood on their doorposts, the spirit of God would cause the death angel to pass over it. So we begin to see these types and shadows of God showing us that there's some significance to the blood. We move forward in scripture where most of us celebrate the idea that Jesus' blood was shed on the cross, but his blood was shed seven times in scripture. We oftentimes get hung up on the one time we see it and we miss the other six times. In the old church, they used to just sit there and say all the time, I plead the blood. And I always used to wonder why they had an affinity to say, I plead the blood. You ever grew up in the old sanctified church and they just would say, I plead the blood. And, and it was just a common theme that you would hear I plead the blood and in my old upbringing in our old Haitian church they would say in French de la sonne jesse and that was all that we ever heard as kids de la sonne jesse and which means simply the blood of Jesus and in the American old church they would say the blood of Jesus we plead the blood and I always wonder why in the world because a lot of times we do things because of tradition that's been passed down to us not even understanding why we do it so we will say I buy and loose you. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. I just heard somebody say it before. I don't know what it means. But I want to show you the authority that comes when you plead the blood of Jesus 
and why it's so important that Jesus shed his blood for us so that now you and I can have a greater appreciation for the blood being shed. That's why you can start to really dance when you understand the blood of Jesus. That's why you can have a greater sense of clarity when you understand the blood of Jesus. Because if I were to ask you, what is the power of the blood? You would say it saved me from sin. That's not incorrect, but it's incomplete. And anything that is incomplete in your life, you won't access the fullness of. It's like having a life insurance policy and you die not knowing that there was a policy written for your family and your family is acting like they're broke, not recognizing that there's been money laid up for them because they didn't have a revelation of what you left for them before you left the earth. So I want you now to become the new, I know you. some of you may not be millennials in age, but I'm talking about in culture. I want you now to be able to know how to be like our ancestors and know why they said I plead the blood. So now when you're in the hospital and you don't have the reverend's phone number because it's a Wednesday night and it's his birthday concert and he's not coming and you're stuck in the hospital, you know how to say I plead the blood and the nurses will look at you crazy but when you have a revelation of what it means means to plead the blood you will have a greater appreciation for the blood now let's go to work so I want you to be students of the word so I want you to turn with Luke chapter number 20 <clears throat> Luke 22 40 through 44 it reads as this I'm going to write a bunch of notes so I want you to follow this is in the garden of Gethsemane good to see you Lyndon always a pleasure it's in the garden of Gethsemane you see this particular thing happen Jesus is praying and he's praying that, God, I want another way. He prays so intently that it sweats of blood dripping from him. This was one of the first places we see him shed his blood. This shedding of blood was a clue to us of something deeper. God is a God that does a lot of clues. Abraham going up the mountain, sacrifice your only son. Your only son who's about 30 years old. His name is Isaac. And right when you're about to sacrifice him, I tell him, don't do it. I got a ram in the bush. And God has given us a clue that Jesus is coming. He gives us Moses. Moses is a type of the law. He's an amazing leader. He's a powerful leader. But he's good, but not good enough to lead you in. He can only take you to the land, but can't bring you in. And I need to raise up Joshua, whose name means Jesus. In Greek, it means the Lord saves. So Moses can only get you to the war, get you to the promised land, but he can't get you in. You need another person named Joshua, God is always doing clues. And then the first part of the clue is this. In Matthew chapter number 22, where we're at, Luke 22, verse 40 and 44, Jesus is shedding his drops of blood. He's praying. And this signifies that when Jesus shed his blood here, when Jesus shed his blood here, it was to let us know that we can overcome any temptation because of the blood of Jesus. So when there are circumstances and situations that are coming in your life and you don't know what to do and there's temptations that seem to overtake you, all we need to do is plead the blood. Somebody say, I plead the blood. Say it like you ate something. Say, I plead the blood. Say it like you know, you know, you know, you know. Say, I plead the blood. Number two, he says, uh, John 19 verse number one. Jesus is carrying the cross beam. He's carrying the cross beam. And they begin to whip him. And they whip him. And, and they whip his back. They whip his back. And his back opens up. And it starts to bleed. And his body is being broken. And this is the second place that he shed his blood. Because it is a testimony to us that my body would be broken so that your body could be healed. It is a testimony to us that when my back was opened up, it was a prophecy that God gave us another clue. If you're sick, I can heal you. If you're sick, I can deliver you. Because my blood was shed for your healing. Somebody say, I plead the blood. 
I don't care how sick you've been. I don't care what the doctor's report has been. There is a blood that can overrule every report that's been spoken over your life. And that is why you need to say, I plead the blood. I have a friend whose son has autism. It is real. Autism is a real, real, real circumstance. And he's been praying and he's been praying and it's not the case for everybody but it is his case and he's been pleading the blood of Jesus over his child well his a child is 11 years old not showing any signs or symptoms yes he has autism but he doesn't act like he has autism somebody say I plead the blood no number three number three Isaiah 53 verse 5 says he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and in this time when Jesus was being beat he had internal bleeding he had internal bleeding which is a symbol to us of God being able to deliver us into right standing from internal wickedness it is not the outside of a man that defiles the cup it is the inside the blood of Jesus is strong enough to save every nasty sin you've ever done every ugly sin you ever done I know what you like to say every mistake you made baby it's still a sin every mishap you've done is still a sin every shortcoming is still a sin the reason why you ain't saying nothing is because most people don't know what you did last summer and if they did know what you did you'd be thankful that the blood cleanses you and the minute you ask God for forgiveness he throws your sin into the sea of forgetfulness it is as far as the east is from the west and because he suffered internally whatever you're fighting with on the inside you can plead the blood of Jesus over it somebody say I plead the blood plead the blood number four number four number four Number four, number four is this, John 19, verse 2. John 19, verse 2. This signifies, and the soldiers twisted a crown, and they put it on his head. And they put a purple robe on him. They, they put a crown of thorns. They put a crown of thorns on his head they, they put a crown not a crown a ring of thorns that they called a crown and they put it in his head and they squeezed the thorns into his head and blood started running from his head which was a sad thing but a good thing because it let me know that now that the blood was shed from his head means that he has dominion over anything that would try to take over my mind and that's why you gotta know when your mind starts acting crazy you gotta say I plead the blood when depression tries to come into your mind you gotta say I plead the blood I believe in counselors I believe in medicine but there are times in your life where your mind is going out of control and you gotta look at yourself and say I don't know what to say but I do know one thing I plead the blood I don't want my mind to spiral out of control I plead the blood somebody touch your head and say I I plead the blood you've been worrying about how you're gonna make it your mind's been wondering how you're gonna do it put your hand on your mind and say I plead the blood I don't know how I'm gonna do it I don't know how I'm gonna make it but I'm not gonna let my mind drive me crazy I plead the blood how's my child gonna do it how am I gonna have it done I plead the blood I plead the blood I plead the blood so so when 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 life gets overwhelming and the enemy is tormenting your mind because he can't torment your destiny because that's a location but he can torment your mind he can make your mind play tricks on you some of you ain't happy not because God ain't deliver you not because God ain't save you because your mind won't let you be happy your mind won't let you be at peace you in the sanctuary but you not in the sanctuary you thinking about what you got to get done you thinking about the work job that you got tomorrow you thinking about your career 
you're thinking about your life and some of you spend so much time worrying I got a word for you plead the blood your career is under the blood your future is under the blood I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind I'm not worried about my life I'm not worried about my tomorrow I plead the somebody shout I plead the blood When you start worried about, am my kids going to make it home safely? I plead the blood. Am I, am I going to get pulled over? I plead the blood. Is this going to work out right in my favor? I plead the blood. Are they talking about me and I don't know they talking about me? I plead the blood. Is that social media post about me? I plead the blood. Don't let the devil run in your mind. If he don't pay rent, don't let him stay there. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, over my soul. greatest warfare that you have is not in your money it's in your mind when the thorns were crushed in his head I want my children to know I got their mind I got their mind I got their mind I got their mind give me your mind give me your mind I got your mind give me your mind I got it if you give it to me I will take it if you give it to me I will take it I, I got your mind I plead the blood over my mind now the next point Matthew 27 verse 35 they pierced the nails Matthew 27, 35, they pierced the nails through his hands. More accurately, they placed the nails through his wrist. Because some of you would argue, well, Jesus couldn't have been crucified on the cross because if they crucified nails in his hands, there's no, there's no tissue strong enough to allow his hands to rest on the cross. But in their culture, they considered the entire hand the wrist. The wrist and the hand were one. So you got to know that because people will argue against your faith and say, well, how could he be crucified with nails in his hands? But what you got to understand is the culture is the wrist includes the hand. And they would crucify him by putting nails in his wrist. They put nails in his wrist. They put nails in his feet. And when they put nails in his hands and he began to bleed, this was a good symbol to us that whatever we touch, God can make prosper because his blood was shed. You ain't successful in your career because of your own doing. You're successful because the blood of Jesus has blessed your hands. You done moved up in your life. You started in the projects. Now you're in the middle class suburb. Don't get it twisted. It is not by your own doing. It is the simple fact that the blood of Jesus was made available and he made whatever you touch prosper. graduated from college some of you not because of your own intelligence but because God has prospered the work of your hands some of you don't got a lot of money but you got more money than most people because God has prospered the work of your hands don't think because you don't live in Owlsworth or Aliquot God has not prospered your hands if you got a roof over your head if you got somewhere to lay down God has prospered your hands and the worst thing to do okay let me back up let me back up let me back up my children there's a lot of them four of them Jesus have mercy when I give them something and they don't say thank you, it's aggravating. I don't need their money, but I do need their gratitude. Okay? God is saying the same thing. I don't need your career. I need your gratitude. That's why when I said to you, you're not prospering by your own ability, 
you're prospering because God has blessed your hands. If you have a couple dollars in your account, it is not by your own doing. It is the simple fact that the blood of Jesus, oh man, pastor, I got my own degree. I worked my own self. Well, let me tell you something. If God takes his breath from you, you ain't got nothing. And when you die, you take nothing with you. The watch, the shoes, the house, you take nothing with you. If God does not give you strength in your body, you have no power to work so now he gives the nails in his feet Matthew 27 35 in the text when Genesis 126 happened we lost all of our dominion Adam ate the fruit with Eve and then we lost our dominion the ability to take territory was stripped from us when Jesus dies on the cross and they nail his feet and blood sheds through his feet. Now remember, Genesis 3, God says, the woman will bruise the head of the serpent through her heel. When Jesus sheds his blood on the cross through his feet, it restores the dominion back to the believer that their feet have authority on whatever territory they possess. This is so important because you need to understand that wherever you go, if you take the blood with you, what may be against you will not work against you. Because, okay, sometimes you need to plead the blood of Jesus even where you step. Because you don't know what environment has been created before you stepped in there. And therefore, you plead the blood of Jesus over your feet. I know you done moved into that house. You ain't even plead the blood over that house. You don't know what's been going in that house. You don't know what seance has been going in that apartment. You don't know what type of devotion has been going on to that apartment. But you plead the blood of Jesus so that whatever spirits may have been in here, when my feet touch this property, it is now gone because I plead the blood of Jesus. You know, your fight ain't in the sanctuary. Your fight ain't at the house. Your fight is in your bedroom. Your fight is in your living room. And maybe you need to plead the blood of Jesus in your house. And maybe you need to take the authority of God. Because wherever your feet go, you have authority. Wherever your feet go, they have authority. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over my feet. Wherever they touch, I have authority. I have authority wherever I go. Because there are some places that are set up as traps. I understand. Some of you be going to these shops where the voodoo priests are there. Trying to find some certain type of oils that they've concocted and devoted to their foreign god. But that's why you plead the blood of Jesus. The blood still has power. I ain't going to bother y'all because y'all look real upset. All right. But, you know, I found interesting that the uh, temple in, 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 in Paris, it burned down and, uh, during Holy Week, which I thought was pretty interesting. And, uh, and it's amazing, all of the humanitarian efforts that have been sent. They're raising money. People have pledged millions and millions of dollars to rebuild uh, that. Five percent of France goes to church. So they're paying all this money to rebuild a structure that people don't go to. But the most interesting thing that I saw about that, and there's also three other churches that have burned down that nobody said nothing about. Okay. But our church this week, we're going to send them a check because here's the thing. It's hypocritical to say that no one's talking about them and not invest in them. Okay, but here's the other thing. That's, that's not the point. But, but here's the thing. They had these gargoyles that were trying to protect the temple. It, research it for yourself. They have these gargoyles that are there as, as, as spiritual overseers of the temple to protect it. Well, here's the thing, beloved. You can have spiritual gargoyles. You can have uh, uh, recite these type of uh, verbiages to, to protect yourself. The only thing that will cover you is the blood of Jesus. 
the thing is, people are like, man, they, 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 they put curses on me, pastor. They put, no, no, baby, let, let me help you. And curses are real. Curses are real. Let's not play with it. Curses are real. But the blood is real, too. Because some of you give more effort to the curse than you do the blood. Because when the blood was shed, it delivered you from the curse of the law. I'm not going to spend all my days talking about the witch doctor. I'm not going to spend all my days talking about the curses that someone said over my life. I'm going to talk about the blood that's on my life. Whenever I wake up, I thank God for the blood. It was not by, the, by my own doing. It was not by my own merit. It was by the blood of the Lamb of God. Everything that I have is by the blood of the Lamb of God and the more I recognize is by his blood can't no demon in hell can't no prince of the air can't no ruler of wickedness in high places steal what the blood has covered number seven and we go home. number seven when they pierced his side John 19 34 blood came out and water came out interesting blood and water came out we ain't gonna play with that water came out symbolizing the holy spirit that they did not receive till acts chapter number two some things god has released they just ain't hit you yet okay you missed that the, the blood was released the water was released symbolizing the holy spirit because he told them in john chapter number 14 don't be afraid i have prepared a place for you and in the future i will come back and they were thinking well what do you mean and sometimes god will release something in your life that he needs certain things to line up first before it gets to you and don't be dismayed whatever you be tied god will take care of you there are some things that god has already spoken over your life you just ain't receive it yet but it's on the way you just ain't get it yet but it's on the way you just haven't held it yet it's on the way it's on the way there are some things that God delays because he knows that if you get it too early you won't use it the way you need to use it and God will wait till Acts chapter number two when you're all confused and don't know what to do and then all of a sudden you see what God had released from the cross now being manifested in your life sometimes I wake up and I say Lord thank you for the things that you got on delay because I don't know that I need it until I actually need it and there are seasons of life that that God has already released things that you need, but it's not the proper time for you to receive it. Okay. So here it is. Yeah. All right. Here's the other thing. So, okay, let me put it. No, no, let me go. This is okay. So, so the blood um, that was on his side. And, and what, where they pierced was, they, they pierced not just his side, beloved. They, they pierced, there's a sack underneath your heart that that's where they pierced. They pierced this sack that's underneath his heart. That's important, y'all. That's important because this piercing that they did caused blood to run down the side of his body. But here's the thing. It symbolized that God has secured my heart. Your heart is secured. In, see, there are, you, you ever get on your job and they got all these benefits that you never read, that you know nothing about? And all of these benefits are available to you over here talking about, man, my heart is broken. God, like, why your heart broke? I'm able to fix it. I didn't say your heart won't get broken, but I'm able to sustain your heart. I'm able to keep your heart. Even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, I'm able to keep your mind at perfect peace. It doesn't mean that storms will not happen. It doesn't mean that the divorce will not happen. But it means that even though the judge will tell you your divorce is final, you may shed tears, but in your heart, I'm at peace because I know I'm in God's hands. Your job may fire you and you may be upset and you may be wondering how you're going to make it but then something comes over you and says, I will take care of you. Your children may not have a father or they may not have a mother and you're wondering how I'm going to raise them but God has secured your heart and when people leave you, God has secured your heart and you won't know the value of God until you need him in an area of your life to prove that he is who he said he is. 
So, the blood of Jesus is like this. Some of you are like, well, I got that. That was kind of theological, but I just kind of need some practical stuff because, you know, I didn't finish. I didn't go to, you know, Dr. Phillips or any great school like that, but it helped me, so. You, you know, okay, so from a medical perspective, and if I'm wrong, just, it's your fault. It still works for the message. Praise God. From a medical perspective, if you're, if you're, if you're sick and you have high blood pressure, um, the doctor will tell you, you know, you need to eat better or you need to run or something like that. You ever have an unhealthy doctor tell you how to get healthy? Anyway, but typically they'll prescribe you blood pressure medicine. Blood pressure medicine doesn't eliminate blood pressure. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking about that. Blood pressure medicine doesn't eliminate blood pressure. It regulates it. It doesn't just regulate it. It stops it from killing you. It doesn't get rid of it, but it regulates it. Okay, okay let me, I'm going to come back pick you up. It, it doesn't get rid of it, but it regulates it, and it keeps it from killing you. Okay. It doesn't get rid of it. It regulates it and keeps it from killing you. Well, the blood of Jesus is the same way. It doesn't stop problems. It regulates it and doesn't stop it from killing you. So when life overwhelms you, the blood of Jesus doesn't let life kill you. It regulates it, but it doesn't let it kill you. That's the power of the blood. And that is why you and I can always say with great confidence, I plead the blood. You don't have to have the most fanciest prayer. You just can say, I plead the blood. If there's a car accident coming and you don't have enough scriptures in your heart, all you got to scream out, I plead the blood. And, oh, pastor, I plead the blood, and it took out somebody I love. Well, they went to be with God, which is a good thing, because they ain't got no more sickness. They ain't got no more worry. They ain't got no more pain. They ain't got no more trial. Oh, can I land the plane here? I know you don't want to talk about death because that's not something we want to deal with. But let me tell you something. If you die in God, that's the best thing that could ever happen to you because you ain't got no more sadness, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more racism, no more prejudice. You are in the master's presence and you are in the peace of God forever and ever and ever. Amen. There is no sorrow where he is. The reason why we are all saved and you need to know this is because death is not the end of a thing. It is the beginning of something greater. It is not the end of a thing. But let me tell you something else. You do know in order for you to live in God, you got to first die in him. Yeah. See, the reason why God can't resurrect some things in your life is because you won't let it die. And what you won't let die will never resurrect. And there are some things you need to let die. Like that nasty attitude, it needs to die. Like that ego needs to die. Like that pride needs to die. The haughtiness needs to die. And when it dies, God can start giving you the job that you want. When it dies, God can fix your heart. When it dies, God can open up a way where there is to be no way. Sometimes the only reason why God ain't moving in your life is because you're too alive. And because you're too alive God won't do nothing for you because you're a God to yourself but when you get to yourself and say Lord I'm just going to die to myself and say Lord whatever you want to do with my life I will let you do and if I ask you what is your next plan and you say well pastor I'm going to do this I'm going to do that I'm going to do that but I don't hear but God Whatever God wants to do, let it be so. That means you're too alive. I know you got your career plan. I know you got your house plan. But whatever God wants to do in my life, I trust him to do it. And if you don't trust him to do it, then he's not leading your life. And maybe some of you need to die this resurrection season. Maybe you need to hang on the cross of not wanting to do what God said. The reason why you're not seeing God manifest in your life is because you're too alive.
drive. You got too much ambition. You got too much drive. And the only way you will survive is when you learn how to die. I know you're trying to secure a bed, but God's trying to secure your heart. And he can't do it unless you die. I'm out of time. Bow your hands and spread. So, Lord, help us today find the heartbeat of God.